Let's talk about this cathedral. It's the Cathedral de la Almudena, which I've totally butchered. It's also not as old as it looks, and it has a few different architectural styles, and they all depend on how you look at it in its way. So before we continue, if you wouldn't mind, uh, really help me out if you could subscribe, add a like, uh, maybe even a comment. That would be awesome. Helps little channels like me get uh, seen by other people. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. That out of the way, did you know that this cathedral was only finished building in 1993? It's like only 30 years old. So the funny thing is, is if I, I'm, I'm truly being honest. I'm very much a dilettante when it comes to architecture. Um, actually, I'm a poser. <laughs> really. I don't know much about it. I can definitely appreciate it. I've picked up on some information here and there, but I don't know anything about architecture. <laughs> I definitely can appreciate different buildings and their styles, and I tend to like them old. Um, but more importantly is I like them noteworthy. I think that really adds to it, uh, the whole... Um, it's like, I've said this very often, it, it, it's like when you see a famous painting or you, you, you see a famous person, right? It's like a celebrity. They're noteworthy because of the stories and the history and all that stuff. So the honesty here <laughs> is that once I hear something like this is newer, I tend, if I'm being honest, I tend really not to like it as much. Like it, it's almost as if it doesn't have the same authenticity, you know? Uh, as something that's like four or five, a thousand years old. But it's kind of fake. It's not so impressive. I think part of it is that we forgive a lot of the flaws in other buildings, paintings, those types of sculptures, um, because they're as old as they are, because they uh, were built way back when, before a lot of the techniques and styles were even in place, right? So um, I don't think it's unusual for me to have a little bit of a bias against new stuff. That doesn't apply here though. I love this cathedral. If you've been following me at all, you've probably seen about a hundred photos of it. I keep coming back here. And so, yeah, I love it. But uh, in true dilettante poser fashion, um, I'm not sure how to explain why. So the cathedral's history is much like Madrid in the sense that it's not as old as you think it is from a contemporary standpoint, um, but its creation was a little artificial uh, in a way. Like Madrid wasn't just naturally created. Most cities, you know, there's a reason why, for whatever reason, uh, people just gravitate to a certain area, it starts building up, uh, turns into a city. But Madrid wasn't created that way. But, but that city for this particular area was Toledo about 70 kilometers that way, um, about an hour's drive or so, right? History tells us that by about the 800s, the Moors had uh, invaded most of Spain. It was just a small little uh, holdout area in the north of Spain. So what the Moors did on top of this big hill uh, was erect a fort, and that was uh, meant to defend Toledo against any invasion from the mountains or the people on the other side of the mountains. Those were the Christians. And of course, once they started reconquering uh, Spain, um, that would have uh, about 1085, uh, Alfonso VI uh, of Leon and Castile took Madrid and took the fort that was built on top of here. By the way, that fort, that turned into the royal palace eventually, <laughs> um, many iterations afterwards. Anyway, once Madrid was conquered, uh, it was used as a defense and a staging area for the rest of uh, the, what they call the Reconquista, right? Which would end in about 1492, right? So up until about 1085, Madrid was just this obscure little fort town. Uh, not many people here at all, right? So obviously there was no need for a big cathedral. But what happened was Toledo was the capital of what would eventually become Spain, at that time. The cathedrals were in Segovia to the north and Toledo to the south, the big cities around here. 
However, in 1561, Philip II decided pretty much on a whim, as they say, uh, to move the capital from Toledo to Madrid. That probably requires a another whole video but basically he was fighting it out with the catholic church as to who was most important he decided to bring the uh, the government here and this is where um, the spanish capital would be and then madrid exploded in population however as brave and powerful as he was he still didn't want to take on the the catholic church completely and so he left the cathedral in toledo and didn't really make any attempt to bring a cathedral here because he didn't want to get into a uh, territorial uh, dispute. And like I said, when that population got to a certain level, which was really, really quick, at some point people were looking around thinking, this place needs a cathedral, right? So they did eventually decide to build a cathedral. Well, we all know that. Um, and they started this work in 1883. They spent all the money on the building foundation though, and basically ran out. Um, and we could see that, how fancy that, um, where the crypt is now, that would be where the uh, foundation is. And you can see how fancy the marble is there, and but the rest of the building doesn't quite hold up to that, right? And when I say this building took a long time to build, I don't mean like the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. Um, that was just constantly in a state of construction. What happened here was um, they ran out of money and they stopped. Um, by about 1930, uh, we had the Great Depression. So we ran out of those funds uh, even more. There wasn't an appetite for construction. After that, Spain had a civil war and which resulted in a you know a fascist regime um so by the 1950s there was like no appetite uh to finish this cathedral one bit and a lot of people at the time thought well we've made it this far without one so you know do we need one but even if they thought that they needed one there was a lot of discussion about uh you know does it need to be that expensive uh do we need to use all these fancy old materials right like back in the day, they billionaires and millionaires, they really didn't have much to spend it on. They, there were no like, you know, uh, space jets to invest in, right? So they invested in things like churches. Um, so there just wasn't anyone, you know, uh, coming to fund this at all. Further, they weren't even really sure how they wanted this thing to look by this point, right? Uh, do we want this as a traditional church uh, built in the 1800s? Do we want this... Um, as part of a uh, new Baroque, uh, neoclassical, all of this boiled down to no appetite for building, no funds, and uh, indecision as far as what they wanted to do. Cut to 1984. As legend has it, Barcelona applied to host for the Olympics. That was the catalyst if they were to get it and they wound up uh, getting the 1992 Olympics. Um, Madrid felt that they needed a cathedral, a proper cathedral, because that's what a proper city had. And with all the focus on Spain during the Olympics, there'd be a lot of visitors. This was the right time to build or finish the cathedral. It was also kind of an obscure rule when it comes to hosting the Olympics, Madrid couldn't apply for the Olympics based on some obscure rule um, where uh, you have to have like a certain level of a city and they have criteria on that. And one of them is having a cathedral. You don't need a cathedral, but it uh, tells the application committee that you're a important, big, large city. So what plans were they gonna follow? Were they going to follow the original architect's design? Were they going to modernize it, uh, as was you know, the style at the time? Were they going to go with uh, something neoclassical, Baroque? Uh, well, turns out 
they did kind of a combination uh, of a few styles, um, like I said, based on where you were around the uh, around the cathedral. Um, but this uh, facing the royal palace, what you're seeing here, is that neoclassical, or I guess maybe you should call it kind of neoclassical or neo neoclassical, um, because uh, it was actually like kind of neo from the neoclassical period, but. Um, I can't really talk on that. I'm a dilettante, remember? <laughs> the interior of the cathedral, though, maintained the Baroque-inspired look. So with Baroque in the inside and neoclassical on the outside, most people were pretty happy with the uh, overall design. Better be Christians. <laughs> So this is the view from the, the north side. Uh, and this is uh, right across from the royal palace. So this would be the view that the royals would have as they do their ceremonial uh, entrance to right in there. <laughs> That's only, that entrance is only allowed by the royal family doing ceremonial things. What you can see is that it doesn't quite match the overall style. This is the, like, the height of the neoclassical style. Um, and you'll notice the light blue um, with the off-color, what, what is that? Uh, I want to say yellow, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm no designer. I don't know what that is. But this is where you could see the most notable difference between the north side and the south side with the light blue and the uh, off-yellow, light yellow, I guess. You, also, you'll see different stone. It's very noticeable here. And like I said, it's right across from the Royal Palace. So looking at it from the south, you can see that it looks different already. The original building material um, for, that they started in the 1800s is right here. Well, th this is the old wall from the fortress. But uh, this right here is the marble for the original foundation, which up until, uh, you know, the 80s, this was just a big stump. Um, but the newer material is a little bit more yellow up here and the dome has a nice, very cool, I love this uh, the dark gray, bluish uh, 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 dome. Spain does that really, really well. But really take a look at how different the colors are because of the different styles, the time frame, um, but the building materials as well. And so from the east, the cathedral looks like a Spanish cathedral. Um, a Southern European cathedral, uh, Catholic cathedral um, with the dome at the center, um, that Spanish style where they don't quite make it a round dome. There's like creases and edges. Uh, I don't know what the technical term is. <laughs> Dilettante. Uh, a very cool look, very uh, Spanish. Uh, and, and of course, this has the darker gray with the lighter blue both at the same time. And, you know, I really, really like that dark uh, grayish blue thing. I yeah, really like it. What do you think? So yeah, I don't really know why I love this cathedral so much. Or that my bias against new buildings doesn't seem to affect that love. Uh, like I said, I come around here a lot, take a lot of photos. Um, every time I come to one of these cities, I tend to gravitate to a certain spot and keep going back as I wander around, like kind of a touchstone. And this cathedral seems to be it for Madrid. Uh, it took a while for me to get there, but I, after three months, I'm always swinging by this cathedral. Aesthetically, uh, I've, it's very appealing. I do like the dome. Uh, I like the pillars in the north, uh, but I also really like the color. Um, both, like, I keep talking about it, but both the grays up top and uh, the light blues, but also the off-white, uh, yellowish kind of color. And, you know, it's really, really cool. But yeah, maybe maybe it's about the story. Maybe uh, uh, once I got to know the cathedral a little bit better uh, and the story behind it, uh, maybe that added to its notoriety and uh, it made it more interesting for me. And that, you know, gave me a little bit of a bias and that's why I like it a lot more, even though it's new. <laughs> And there's that thread of, oh, well, you know, it's not an old classic building, right? In fact, it has its own story about how it very specifically created that look. And that story added to its notoriety.
What do you think? Do you like it? Do you like new buildings? Do you have that same bias? Are you better at architecture than I am and would like to teach me a little bit more about some of the terminology? Please write it in the comments. And as I always ask, please subscribe. Uh, please like, really helps out little channels like mine. So with that said, adios, hasta luego. Bye everyone.